Ja, in Davos was er veel te doen over de toespraak van de Argentijnse president Javier Milei, die, die zich fel uitsprak tegen alle globalistische plannen. Today I'm here to tell you that the Western world is in danger. And it is in danger because those who are supposed to have to defend the values of the West are co-opted by a vision of the world that inexorably leads to socialism and thereby to poverty. Unfortunately, in recent decades, motivated by some well-meaning individuals willing to help others, and others motivated by the wish to belong to a privileged caste, the main leaders of the Western world have abandoned the model of freedom for different versions of what we call collectivism. We're here to tell you that collectivist experiments are never the solution to the problems that afflict the citizens of the world. Rather, they are the root cause. Ja, Gavje Melay in uh, Davo. Hij is libertariër, net als jij. Antiglobalistisch. Uh, deel jij zijn zorgen? Zorgen, ja, zeker. Kijk, dat we richting een, een globalistische, socialistische helstaat gaan. Dat, uh, daar is uh, Davos een heel mooi voorbeeld van, denk ik. Ik vind het fantastisch dat hij daar zijn speech mocht doen. Ook een beetje apart dat hij uitgenodigd wordt natuurlijk. Maar ja, dat zagen we eerder met andere mensen, zoals Trump ook. Die eigenlijk alle andere aanwezigen een beetje kapot maken. Dat heeft Milai ook fantastisch gedaan. Maar het, het, het mooiste vind ik ook... Kijk, al die andere mensen aanwezig die, die betogen hem van uh, ja, populisme en extreem rechts. Ik, ik raad echt iedereen aan om deze speech te kijken. Want het was echt gewoon een enorm hoog niveau economisch uh, betoog... waarin hij gewoon compleet uiteenzet hoe uh, vrije marktprincipes... en de, de, ja, de Oostenrijkse school van economie eigenlijk gewoon voor welvaart zorgen. En, en dat dat compleet rationeel bewezen is in, in de maatschappij. En dat socialisme dus alleen maar afspraak op die... Uh, ja, op dat systeem brengt. Wat deed hij daar in Davo? Is hij een jong global leader? Of is hij daar echt het hol van de leeuw in gelopen om te zeggen... jongens, ik ben hier niet blij mee? Nou ah ja, mijn mening... Kijk, het is allemaal speculatie natuurlijk. Ik sta achter wat hij zegt. En ik, ik geloof niet in een autoriteit. Dus ik zal ook hem niet als mijn held zien. Hè? Ik, ik geloof alleen in wat hij zegt en wat hij prediceert. En dat hij nu al alleen met dit soort speeches het bewustzijn verhoogt... over, over centrale banken, over socialisme, over... Een, een andere vorm van de economie, dat, dat vind ik gewoon alleen al winst. En ja, dat, dat hij daar mag komen om op die manier uh, het uit te leggen. Hij is daarheen gegaan met een uh, commercial class jet. Hè. Hij is gewoon uh, onder het volk met uh, selfies ging hij maken. Terwijl alle andere leiders daar gewoon met de privéjets heen gaan, et cetera. Hij is daar eigenlijk heen gegaan, heeft een half uur een speech gehouden. Hij zegt tegen iedereen, fuck jullie. En hij is weer weggegaan. En dat is... En mijn idee is dat gewoon fantastisch. Dat is wat je moet doen bij het World Economic Forum. Ja, en is zijn winst in november een teken dat het, het globalisme aan, aan macht afbrokkelt? Naar mijn idee wel. Het is, het, is uh, ja, het, het verlaten van autoriteiten. Hè. Mensen, kijk net weer, als het gaat om vertrouwen. De, de huidige leiders, waar HVM Milei zich ook tegen uitspreekt... die hebben alleen maar autoriteit, maar geen inhoud. En dat is een beetje het idee. En mensen vertrouwen niet meer autoriteit voor autoriteit zelf. Het gaat nu echt om de inhoud. En... Waar ik wel achter sta, is dus het idee van Milei die echt alles op inhoud doet. Ja, uh, voor de kijkers die het nog niet weten, we hebben vanavond een uh, grootheid in de uitzending. Uh, David Eyck. David, welkom in our uh, live program. How are Thank you? you? I'm good, you? Ja, yeah, I'm fine. Um, it's an honor to have you here. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm sure you saw the speech of uh, Javier Milei. Uh, uh -huh. Do you agree with his criticism? Well, you know, what you've got is um, a, a polarity that's emerged, not least with the alternative media um, becoming uh, supporters of what you might call the right. And anyone that criticizes the left becomes a kind of hero of the alternative media. And while um, I'm absolutely against um, the destruction and suppression of freedom by governments, um, and he was articulate on that, um, I want to see the alternative, because there were some things in there that were um, a bit concerning, like when he was talking about not wanting um, a regulation or the dismantling of monopolies. And, you know, people say, Okay, everyone's getting tired of authority, all right, but what's authority? 
people think that authority is just government. It's not. It's also um, monopolizing corporations who are dictating uh, to people what's going to happen and what isn't. When you have monopolies, for instance, that can then decide what is published and what is not published, what is allowed to be posted and what is not. And so um, I want to see what uh, Mile has as an alternative and not just take it that because he's telling people in the alternative media and of the right what they want to hear, which is, oh, we must stop government regulation. Uh, it doesn't mean that the alternative is going to be any better. And we've got to wait and, and, and see what that is in terms of what happens in Argentina. Because, um, you know, what we, what we have is this polarization where one says white, and because they say white, the other has to say black. But actually, the truth is almost every time in the shades of gray. And so it, it, if we have no regulation at all of uh, monopolies and their imposition on society, then that's a form of um, authoritarian dictatorship in the same way as having uh, un unchecked regulation, which allows the political side uh, of authority to um, dictate what happens in society. And, you know, I've been... Um, uncovering this um, manipulation now for 34 years. There was no alternative media when I started out. I've watched it appear. And what you, what you, uh, what you grasp is that this, what I call global cult that manifests as the World um, Economic Forum and the Bill Gates operation, et cetera, the World Health Organization, it's not just working through one side in politics or, or, or one um, ideology. It's working through all of them. And so what you have is um, governments controlled by this, this cult, quite demonstrably, but so are corporations, and they're serving the same agenda. So if we move from, oh, we, we've got to stop government uh, authority imposing to allowing corporate authority to impose, the same cult is still calling the shots. David, um, I, I, have, I have some more people, questions. It's, it's David, I have some more questions. To, it's you... time just to take a step back and not react just because someone's telling us what we want to hear. Yeah, I do understand what you're saying. Um, I want to say furthermore that uh, you were a great inspiration for me personally to start up this uh, channel in the beginning of COVID. I was watching Brian Rose interviewing you several times and All it right, gave yeah. me a lot of energy to move on. And now we have uh, reached uh, millions of people in the Netherlands uh, spreading the world. But um, uh, So thank you for that, for that inspiration. But uh, I have more questions for you. Also, uh, some guests here on the table want to ask you some yeah. questions. Tom, uh, one of the persons here. Uh, but what I would like to know is, do you uh, consider uh, Javier Milei as a, a false prophet, or is he just walking the wrong path? Well, we're going to see that with how he, um, he runs Argentina from here. What I'm saying is words are easy um, and actions are, are, are less easy. And... We've got to see what those um, what form those actions take, because, like I say, if we're moving from uh, the regulation and authority being imposed by government to a, a corporate free for all, in which it's just an unfettered uh, corporate uh, corporate fest to impose their will on the population, well, we've not moved forward very far, and like I say. Um, we've got to start looking at the shades of gray. You know, all regulation is not bad. It's, it's massive over-regulation and total regulation, which is where we're moving. Um, that, that's what the, uh, the, the problem is. But without any regulation at all, then your Amazons and, and, and your, your major global corporations are going to run riot. And, and that's uh, something that um, we have to be very careful about. I do understand what you're saying, um, David. Um, here in the studio, we have Tom van der Moen. He's a lib libertarian uh, in the Netherlands, um, and he would like to ask you some questions as well. 
Okay. Sure. Hey, David Eich. Um, well, yeah, I, I truly agree with everything you're saying that, that behind the scenes that the corporations have as much power as the governments and are mostly the problem themselves. But, um, yeah, and of course I agree as well that we have to see what, what Millet is worth, you know, and, and talk is easy, but we have to see the actions. But when, when well, I'm, I'm a libertarian and uh, Millet is, is an Austrian economist, and the way that he explains himself and the way that he makes people conscious of uh, also private industry and, and organizations like central banks, I think it's a big win for society because central banks are private entities. And also in his speech on uh, Davos, he, he calls out companies that are parasitting on governments like, and like Amazon and like all the big companies truly, in my opinion, get their, their power from lobbying with government. And, and without the government, they would not be entirely as big as they are now. Yeah, I mean, the point I would make, um, going back to this global cult, this network of secret societies that is behind uh, world events, um, they are controlling the corporations as they're controlling the government. And that's why they, I mean, you, you will um, obviously see this. That's why they're moving as one unit. If, if you're looking at the, the woke agenda, the uh, climate change hoax agenda and, and all these um, uh, moves towards the digital currency and digital control and the digital concentration camp, then governments are moving that way through legislation and corporations are moving that way via the way they run their companies and the way they um, are running the policies that um, are, are affecting the, um, the whole of society. So we're not looking at an either or, we're looking at um, a both. And uh, that's why I say it's very important that we don't um, throw babies out with bathwater and think, okay, we're gonna get rid of uh, or, or challenge government um, imposition and, um, and forget that you know, the major, major global corporations are actually controlled by the same force that's working through government. The same force that's working through the European Union that's turned that from the start into a tyranny, as anyone with a brain cell could have predicted, um, are the, is the same force that's, that's, um, uh, that, that's running the corporations. So what I'm saying is it's, uh, it's very important that we don't just jump on the black or the white, but we take a step back and look at it from a much wider perspective. The other thing about Millet's speech is that he he was uh, focusing a lot on, on what he called economic growth. We must have economic growth. But economic growth, while well, I've been looking at that since the 1980s, it's a very, very poor and, um, and uh, inefficient way of judging the, um, the, the benefits of us to, to a society uh, economically, because what it's basically measuring is the amount of money that's changing hands for goods and services and whether that all goes up and what have you. So that means that every time something happens that's very bad for society, and we'd rather not have it, if it means money changing hands and profits being made, then economic growth ticks that as a positive for society when it's not. And I think it's, um, it's a very, very uh, kind of uh, hammer tool to, to judge economic uh, benefit, mm -hmm. just, just economic growth. It, it's a very old and tired way of looking at yeah. the world, I think. Yes, yeah. I, I agree totally, and this is what, what I'm saying every time I'm on air. It's in the, like when you see the, the CPI or all those models they have, it's just inflation is pushing up these numbers, so it, it's totally fake. But that's what I'm saying. If you listen to, to Millet a lot, and, and He's, he's very uh, criticizing the, the central banks in how they push up the, with inflation and money printing, push up this, this um, way of economic value. So I, I truly think we need to see what, what Millet does, but interpreting his speech myself, I know when, when he talks about economic growth, it's more about produce, production and welfare for the people. Yeah, I, I just hope that he's um, he's streetwise to how it all really works, though, and just just see um, uh, left and right, 
because the uh, Bank for International Settlements in Basel, Switzerland, that coordinates policy, as you will know, through the uh, central banks, is owned by this cult. They're orchestrating it. Uh, but the cult also owns the corporations. It also owns the governments because it's been going for so long and has expanded its reach to such an extent that it's now um, dictating uh, global events. And, uh, you know, if we're not streetwise on that and we fall into the left, bad, right, good, then we can get ourselves in a right mess. Sure. David, last question from me. Uh, do you see um, a growing resistance against uh, this globalism that you call a global cult? Yes, I do. I mean, you know, when I started out uh, 34 years ago on this, uh, this journey, um, I couldn't fill a phone box with interest. No one was interested. But now, I mean, it's fantastic. And like I say, um, I watched the uh, alternative media appear. It didn't exist when I started out for a long time afterwards. Uh, but what I have seen recently, and I think it's, it's something to be very aware of and very careful about, is the way that um, the alternative media, or what I call the mainstream version of it, has started to focus almost entirely on the political level of all this. And, and, and it's therefore started to polarize. If you look at American, the uh, alternative media in America, for instance, it started to polarize into right-wing politics good, support Trump, left-wing politics bad. And, and, and what, what is that? See, when the alternative media started to appear, what, what we were saying is countries are one party states and this force is working through both uh, political wings. So whoever's in power, the cult is in power. And that seems to have been forgotten by a lot of people, especially people that have come into the alternative media in recent times, not least since the COVID uh, card was played. They've, they've, they've come in and they've lost that basic idea that it's a one-party state. Yes, there will be some politicians that are genuine, of course, but generally it's a one-party state where any party that has a, the power to form a government is ultimately answering to this cult. And therefore, to, um, to say, uh, you know, MAGA, uh, right-wing republicanism is the answer, um, is just going down a very, very old road uh, where we've already been and it's led nowhere. Yeah, I said last question, but I have more questions for you, David. I'm really curious. Are you still a prisoner in the Isle of Man? Are you still not allowed to travel? No, no uh, the Isle of Wight, actually. Isle of um, Wight, okay. The Isle of Man has, has, has tax benefits. The Isle of Wight is like everywhere else. Um, Sorry for that. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, th this is another thing you see. Uh, I find quite extraordinary is that you can uh, be banned from uh, 27 European countries because of the actions of the Dutch government. It's going to be 29 by March, apparently. I can be banned from Australia. And um, why are you so dangerous in, in, in their perspective? Yeah, what, I'm, what, what is I'm, so what dangerous I'm, about David Icke to travel in, in, what, what in, in these Schengen actually, countries? What I'm actually doing, funnily enough, uh, given the you know, what we've been talking about is I'm not going down that left right um, route, that left right explanation. I'm saying that actually all these things are controlled by the same force. And, and if you don't see that, then you can be working for this force while thinking you're working against it. And there's a lot of people in America who support the whole uh, Trump phenomenon but we're falling for it. I mean, if you look at, um, again, not words, but actions, um, what someone like Trump, who uh, claims to stand for freedom, would have done at the end of his last presidency is to pardon Julian Assange and Edward Snowden. Instead, he used the power of pardon to pardon a bunch of crooks, including his uh, son-in-law, um, Jared Kushner's father. Um, it was Trump that uh, claims credit and still claims credit for uh, pushing through the um, Operation Warp Speed fake vaccine program. That's so, been so what is your conclusion? So what is so, your conclusion? So, so, so 
now we're having again this next uh, side of uh, Trump or the next stage of Trump where they're now saying, yeah, he'll be president. And what I'm hearing is exactly the same that I heard the last time, which is, you know, get Trump in. Trump's the savior. Trump's the, the man who will sort it out. But well, I assume, I assume you, don't, you don't prefer Joe Biden. No, I don't prefer Joe Biden. That's so the what, point. What, what is left for so, us so, to well, choose? This is, this is an interesting point. You know, this is one of the major reasons why politics is such a diversion, because the number of people that are pulling the strings of the world is absolutely tiny compared with the apparently 8 billion people in the world having their strings pulled. And therefore, there's no way a few can control the many if the many won't cooperate or won't allow themselves to be divided to fight among each other, not least politically, it's not possible. If we won't cooperate with the few, the few have no power. But what we have is this political system where people are persuaded that to change anything, you have to have a politician do it for you. So, so it's like what this cult is doing through the political system is buying time. So, okay, oh, Trump's the savior, okay. And then four years later, you realize he's not. But the, the cult has had four years to advance its agenda. So do you, consider him, do you consider him controlled opposition? Or is he just a useful idiot? Well, he, 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 could, he could be either. But uh, anybody who um, thinks that Trump is going to uh, change uh, anything of substance, even if he gets in again, um, is, is uh, you know, it's like, um, you know, my father used to say that um, uh, second and third marriages are the triumph of hope over experience. Mm. And um, I think that's uh, true of a lot of stuff that goes on in politics, including what's going on with Trump. The point is, if you look at the number of people who were supporting Trump, what was it, 70 odd million, uh, apparently, at the last election, what if that 70 odd million just stopped cooperating with the system, stopped cooperating with their own enslavement, stopped doing what the few tell them to do? Would that make more of a difference than voting for Trump and saying, well, we hope he'll be all right and save us in the next four years? Of course it would. So what but you're saying by, is we by shouldn't. Being the political answer, you're giving your power away to a politician. Who, who then, um, four years later, five years later, you say, well, it didn't really change much, did it? Are oh. you saying that we shouldn't vote at all? Well, I've not, I've not voted for a, a very long time, living, living, living memory, because um, if I'm going to vote for someone, I want um, a choice. I don't want an illusion of choice. So in uh, Britain at the moment, we have a conservative government led by Rishi Sunak, who is absolutely owned to his DNA by this global cult and connects into the whole tech uh, uh, arena of control and AI via his family connections. And the opposition in this country, who is very likely to get in, God help us if they do, is the Labour Party of a man called uh, Keir Starmer, who, um, if he gets in, he will be Britain's Joe Biden. It will be unfettered cult agenda being imposed on the, the people, all the climate agenda, all the uh, um, woke agenda in all its forms. It's going to be on steroids if uh, Keir Starmer gets in. So, so where's the choice? You can have um, the cult agenda a little more slowly, or the cult agenda on steroids. And, and it's the, by, by thinking the political system is actually going to change anything, that's the problem. That's the diversion. We the people. I mean, how many people live in the, in the Netherlands compared with the number of people dictating to uh, the people of the Netherlands? Uh, the, the ratios are ridiculous. The few can only control the many by the acquiescence of the many and by the many obeying what the few tell them to do. 
we stop and stop and say, hold on a minute, is this just, is this fair to everybody? No, it's not, so we're not doing it. Then the political uh, authority ceases to be. And, and, and this is the, the, the way that this house of cards is coming down. And it is a house of cards because the people, through their um, acquiescence and obedience to authority, are holding the house of cards up. If we stop doing it, it would fall. It's a, it's a psychological trick. And giving your power away to politicians is fundamental to that trick. Thank you, David Icke, for your contribution and uh, inspiration. Have a good Thank evening. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Ja, dat was uh, David Icke. Uh, interessant om naar hem te luisteren. En wat hij eigenlijk zegt, hè? power to the people. Dat klinkt een beetje libertarisch, hè? een beetje veel. Hè? Ja, zeker. Nou, kijk, dat is ook wat ik zeg. Het, het idee wat hij ook zegt, van ja, met stemmen geef je eigenlijk jouw autoriteit weg... Aan een, aan een orgaan die voor jou gaat beslissen. Ja, dat idee is compleet libertarisch. Het, het is ook heel paradoxaal om eigenlijk als libertariër de politiek in te gaan. Want het enige wat je wil is daar verkondigen... dat mensen zelf hun verantwoordelijkheid over hun leven moeten hebben... en niet afhankelijk moeten zijn van de overheid. Deel jij zijn opvattingen dan of zitten jullie toch nog wel uit elkaar? Nou ja, kijk, het, het deel wat hij en, zegt... En, van en heb, je hebt wel een overheid nodig om juist die monopolies te reg reguleren. Dat, dat is wat hij propageert. Daar ben ik het niet mee eens. Maar dat is natuurlijk het, de libertaire discussie. Wij zien dat... Ook al heeft de overheid een klein beetje macht om die centrale wetgeving over bedrijven te bepalen, dan krijg je een World Economic Forum die daarna gaat lobbyen. Dus, ja. dus het, is, het blijft altijd een, een kip-ei-verhaal. Zeg maar. Wat zou je als eerste weg moeten halen? Naar mijn idee kunnen monopolies alleen bestaan met hulp van de overheid. Want de overheid is. Kijk, bedrijven als Amazon, die hebben geen legermacht, die hebben geen politiemacht. Die hebben niet de macht om jou te dwingen tot jouw keuzes. Dat de heeft maffia alleen. De maffia hadden we toch ook voorheen? Ja, de maffia heeft dat ook. Maar ja, de ja, maffia, ook maffia is ook zelfs. Toen de maffia meer macht kreeg, was het omdat zij de politie konden afbetalen. Dus de politie deed de burgers controleren en de handhaven, maar hun niet. Mm. Er zit altijd een, een, een keer te zijde aan, zeg maar. En het libertarische idee is in ieder geval in een compleet vrije markt, zonder overheidsinvloed. En dan moet je alles meerekenen. Patenten of, of regulering of, of belastingkortingen voor de grote bedrijven... die de kleine bedrijven wel moeten betalen, subsidies, elke vorm. Overal kan je wel iets van overheidsinvloed invullen... En als je dat allemaal weghaalt, dan heeft een bedrijf maar één bestaansrecht. En dat is een goed product leveren voor klanten die dat van jou willen kopen. Als je dat niet doet, komt er een concurrent. Ja, we hebben het hier al eens eerder over gehad in een interview. Hè, over altcoin en bitcoin en ook over libertarisme. En het loslaten van al die structuren van uh, overheden. Maar dan kom je toch ook uit bij uh, zowel uh, uh, instituties, maar ook als burgers. Die dan leven moeten, of moeten gaan leven buiten angst. Want je moet dat dan allemaal durven met elkaar, hè? Want als het allemaal niet meer georganiseerd is, mm -hmm. dan moet je het zelf gaan organiseren. En dan kun je niet meer leunen op die overheid. Maar je ziet dus hoe zo'n NAVO-generaal die angst in die samenleving blijft pompen. Ja. Is, is angst niet eigenlijk dat, dat grote probleem wat ervoor zorgt dat die burger nooit op gaat staan? Ja. Zeker, maar ja, op een gegeven moment kan je wel afvragen wat spannender is. Want als ze geen verantwoordelijkheid nemen, dan krijg je ellende. En, en uh, zou het kunnen zijn dat de maatschappij dusdanig vervalt... dat je dus je verantwoordelijkheid moet gaan nemen. Denk aan anarchie bijvoorbeeld. Ja, of je neemt het eerder, zeg maar. Dus het is eigenlijk een beetje wanneer kom je in beweging... pas als het te laat is of, uh, of preventief. Ja, en, en 2024 is, is in heel Europa eigenlijk het jaar van de grote verkiezingen. Ook in Amerika... Uh, gaan, we, gaan we een grote uh, kanteling zien? Nou, ik denk dat we in ieder geval de popcorn erbij kunnen pakken. Het zal, het zal een heel bewogen jaar worden. Hè? Ja, op, op elk niveau zie je het. Hè? Met, met uh, oorlogen, met uh, ja, wat, wat er met, met de handel gebeurt. Hè? Nu ze de handelsschepen uh, stil hebben gelegd uh, in, in Duitsland en zelfs in Nederland... komen er al berichten van ja, je moet uh, maar kijken of de, de supermarktschappen nog vol kunnen liggen. Dus allemaal toch, toch weer die angstpropaganda die we ook aan het begin van corona zagen. Hè? De, de supermarkten ja. leeg. Als jij gaat zeggen tegen de bevolking... oh, pas op, want de supermarkten kunnen leegraken. het eerste wat er gebeurt is iedereen gaat inkopen doen. En dan zijn de supermarkten leeg. Ja, David, als je net David Eick hoorde praten... dan zegt hij eigenlijk van ja, hè, er zijn allerlei uh, mensen die opstaan... zoals Trump, en nu heb je dan Milei. In Nederland hebben we dan uh, Wilders... die dan zorgt voor hoop bij een grote groep. Maar in, het, in de ogen van, van, van David Eick kiezen we eigenlijk vanuit anti-keuze voor personen die het ook niet voor ons gaan oplossen. Ja, of hebben we alleen maar oog voor de spelers die op het schaakbord staan? Ja. Dan zien we niet wat er achter het schaakbord uh, zich afspeelt... en welke mensen daar aan de touwtjes trekken. Uh, ik denk inderdaad niet dat een oplossing komt van een Poetin of van een Trump. Nee, ik denk dat je dan 
het, het veel te makkelijk maakt. Uh, het is niet zo eendimensionaal, uh, het of zwart of wit of links of rechts. Uh, ik denk inderdaad wat hij zegt, als je daarvoor valt... dat je dan elke keer om de vier jaar teleurgesteld bent... en hen weer vier jaar tijd hebt gegeven om hun eigen agenda te uh, voltrekken. En uh, ja, ik denk dat je daar uh, scherp op moet zijn. En... Zijn er dan helemaal geen lichtpuntjes? Uh, zorgen deze mensen niet toch ook voor ja, kleine wel. veranderingen... die misschien een sneeuwbaleffect op gang brengen? Zeker. Nou, ik denk dat zijn boodschap daarin helder is. Het stop empowering politicians en stop empowering multinationals. Als we daar een beetje mee beginnen. Mm -hmm. Dus uh, bewuster je geld uitgeven. Nou ja, qua stemmen, libertair <laughs> stemmen. Ja, nee, dat, 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 uh... dat is dus wel het ding. Hè? Kijk, het libertarisme predikt juist ook van... Zie niet mij als jullie redder. En Milei zegt het zelf ook, weet je. Van het, niemand gaat je redden. Hij is, Milei is een anarcho-capitalist. Dus heel letterlijk anarchisme. Hij zegt ook van ja... Um, niemand zou over jouw leven moeten regeren. Ik ook niet. Jullie moeten mij niet als jullie redder zien. Libertariërs zien niemand als hun redder. Kijk, ik sta achter wat Liber, uh, Milei zegt. En, en ook de dingen die uh, David Eijk zegt. Hè, van Kijk naar, naar de geldstromen, kijk naar de macht erachter. En dat zijn de centrale banken, naar mijn idee. En daar spreekt Milei zich ook heel erg tegen uit. Dus het, ik zie het wel als een hele grote winst... dat Milei en, en andere uh, mensen in het politieke spectrum... die naar mijn idee betere dingen zeggen... in ieder geval bewust zijn onder de, de publiek verhogen... over dit soort systemen. Ja, we gaan afronden, dames en heren. Ik vond het een boeiende uitzending. En mooi dat we David Eyck een keertje in het programma ja, hadden. gaaf. Dat is toch een uh, historisch moment, zouden we kunnen zeggen. In ieder geval bij Blackbox. Dankjewel voor jullie uh, bijdrage. Lekker, graag gedaan.